In a fast-paced, moving world of technology, new devices and gadgets surround our daily world. And with that technology, the consumer must agree to the company's terms if they want to use their product. Well, today, WNY's Samantha Potter looks at what's behind those endless pages of terms and agreements. Samantha. Jennifer, we've all been there. We want to get the newest update on our smartphone, so we zip past the privacy policy and go straight to the Yes, I Agree button. But what exactly did we agree to? We scroll to the bottom and check the little square box, a majority of us never bothering to read the fine print. But what exactly are we agreeing to? Under Apple's iOS software license, the company keeps records of what you're searching, your location when you're searching, and if you speak to Siri, Apple keeps track of everything you say, from who you FaceTime to the songs you listen to. And Twitter? While you own the copyright to your pictures and tweets, the company makes it clear that they and third parties can take that content and profit from it, while you'll never see a dime. You can do so many things with a cell phone. Why has it become a premier surveillance technology? When did we agree to that? I didn't. Cornell professor Stephen Wicker says just because they are collecting all this data doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Companies can use this information to improve their product and work out certain bugs. So for example, um, it's very useful to a large cell phone operator to know when your phone loses contact. You know, maybe I need another cell tower in this place. But the downside is they're collecting a lot of information which they'll then store and perhaps it's available to hackers. In 2012, Apple was hacked by hacker group Anasec, leaking information including names, phone numbers, and addresses of more than 12 million Apple users. And in 2013, 3 million Adobe customers had their credit card or debit card information stolen. It's really important that we have a clear sense of what's being collected and why, what's being done with the information and how it's being collected, uh, how it's being protected, excuse me. But as a consumer, are we really supposed to read through a 30-page privacy policy? And what if we don't agree to the terms? You have a right to enter into contracts. Um, there's consideration, meaning that uh, you're using their service, so you've got to abide by their terms and conditions. I'd be surprised if many people knew what they're signing up for or what they're um, allowing the corporations to use. I took a number of different license agreements to attorney Robert Siglin in Elmira to have him decipher what the terms and agreements mean. He found that nearly all of the agreements said the same thing. We collect data from the software to make our product better. We can share information with third parties or affiliates of our company. We can change the terms at any time. And the biggest similarity, we are not responsible if anything goes wrong. Siglin explains companies go to painstaking measures to make sure you can't sue them if something goes wrong, even if it's their fault. They make that painfully clear, and that's why these documents are pages and pages long. They go out way out of their way to insulate themselves from any liability, no matter what. Even if the software damages your device, they're claiming they're not liable. These are contracts. If you don't like it, don't use the service, and I guess that's the bottom line. So you're left with two options. Accept the privacy policy or don't use the service. What do you choose? If you choose to use these devices, there's not much you can do to stop the companies from collecting data. However, you can disable certain features such as turning your location sharing off or opting out of sharing personal information if that's an option. You can access these options through your phone settings. Reporting in the studio, Samantha Potter, WENY News.